Today we're talking all about bass, which I don't normally do too many bass videos, but we are discussing the Aurora DSP Gorilla plugin. So if you want to know what this plugin can do, what it sounds like, all the good stuff, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about the Aurora DSP Gorilla, which is a bass processing plugin. So it does some preamp simulation it has some cab and impulse responses in it. It does some octaves both on the lower end and higher end. It has compression. It has built-in harmonics that you can add. It has kind of a variety of different things in it. So what we're going to do in this video first is I'm going to show you how to actually use the plugin because it does have, you know, several things in it. And then lastly, I'm going to use it on a bass track in a rock song and we're going to dial in a tone for it. So that should give you a pretty good idea of whether you want to add this plug into your collection or not. And if you do, I have a link in the description below where you can go purchase it. So now that that's out of the way, I do want to mention to check out audiosourcer.com and check out all the different services that I have to offer. So I have things from audio mixing to audio mastering. I also have audio editing. And if you want to learn more about music production, I have one-on-one -on -one remote teaching. And there's also a blog on the website where you can subscribe to that for free, which is going to give away some information that I don't teach on the YouTube channel. So that is definitely worth checking out. So with that being said, let's actually get further into today's topic and let's look at the user interface of the Aurora DSP Gorilla. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools and I have the Aurora DSP Gorilla plugin open here and it is a pretty large plugin, it takes up most of my screen here. So we're gonna go over the user interface first so you know how to use the plugin. So across the top here, this is your top bar and has your basic functions of the plugin, not really the meat and potatoes, but we got our about section, the manual launches from within the plugin here, so that is good. And you also have your license information. In the middle section here, this is where your presets are. So there are a couple built in here. I have a pre-released version, so likely when you buy this, there's going to be more presets in here than what you see here. You can also make your own presets and save them in here also. To the right over here, you can do some MIDI mapping, and then you also have a built-in tuner, which is good. That's what we want to see in all of our guitar or bass plugins. Now, the main section of this plugin where all the magic happens is pretty much everything down below here, but starting the left-hand column, this is our input gain here. Below that, we have our crossover points, because essentially this has three sections within it. We have our treble, mid, and bass. So right here, this is our crossover frequency for the mid and treble, and we can change this with this knob right here. Below this, this is our crossover point for the bass and mid right here, okay? And then below that, we can actually add a lower and higher octave to the bass sound by simply increasing these knobs here. And these are percentage knobs, so you're gonna be using them as mix knobs, so you can kind of blend in those octaves to your liking. Now looking at the middle section here, starting with the preamp, this is where you choose your bass tone. So this first dot here, which turns green when you select it, this is the Fender Super Bassman tube amplifier. The second dot here, which turns yellow, is the Aguilar Tone Hammer TH500. And lastly, this dot when you select it turns red. This is the Ampeg Heritage SVT CL tube amplifier. CL stands for classic. So in this tutorial slash review here, when we're actually testing this on the bass track and this song, we're going to end up using the Ampeg sound because that's the one I like in my testing that I've done so far, but I'll let you hear them all. But that's the one we're going to stick with, just so you know. This knob here allows you to adjust the gain of the preamp and to pretty much shape the top end sound of the bass guitar, as the manual says. And then below this here, you can adjust this from clean to drive. And you can enable hot if you want, and it will light up in green. We'll just leave this on the default for now. And this is a mix knob here, so you can actually mix in the preamp sound as a parallel effect, okay? 
Over here in the middle section, this is your tone stack. This is where you could do some actual more in-depth EQing here. The gentle button here will give you more of a warm tone, and then the bright obviously will give you more of a bright sound, okay? And then the percentage here, this is a overall kind of a mix knob for the treble sound in general. And then beneath this here, this is our middle section here, which is our mids. So for the maximizer knob here, this is actually a compression knob here. So if you turn it up, you're gonna get more compression. And then the grunt knob here, this allows you to introduce extra harmonics and overtones into the middle frequencies for the bass. And then over with our mount knob here with the percentage, you're gonna be using this to mix in our mids, just like we were with the treble amount knob above it. And then lastly down here, this is our bass section. So the maximizer, same thing down here for that. That's gonna be compression for the bass down here. The growl's gonna do the same thing as the grunt. It's gonna get you some more of those harmonics and overtones in the bass frequencies. And then lastly, the amount is gonna be how much bass frequencies you wanna mix into the overall sound, okay? And then in the bottom left of this middle section here, you can also bypass the preamp section completely with this button right here, and it will light up in green when you do that. Now, our last and final section is the right section over here. So for your cab IR, IR is impulse response, you have four different options in here and they're kind of in a joystick form. You can actually move the little dot in between any of them and this allows you to get a combination of them in any which way you like. So again, this is gonna be the combination of the cabinet and the impulse response, okay? And that's gonna obviously change the sound of the guitar tone quite a bit. Now, down here, we have our built-in limiter in this plugin, which will ensure that the sound is never clipping when it comes out of this plugin. And then lastly, here is your output fader right here, okay? So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Gorilla by Aurora DSP. So let's actually dial in some of these sounds on a actual bass guitar track.
All right, so that was the bass tone I was able to achieve in about three and a half minutes or so. Um, if you saw that middle button I was adjusting, the one that had the gorilla icon, that is actually called Feed the Gorilla. I did not mention it earlier. It is a secret button. But its main purpose is to add some extra aggression to the sound, and I felt like this track needed some, so I did add some in there. So overall, I felt like this plugin did a pretty good job of getting a good bass tone for this song. This song is a pop punk song. You wouldn't really know it by just hearing the bass and drums, but it is a copywritten song, so that's all I could play for you. Um, so we got the nice driving mid-range, which is what we want in a pop punk song. And I felt like when it was actually bypassed the plugin, we were kind of lacking in the lows and lower mids. So I did add that in with the plugin and we kind of thickened up the sound. So all that together was pretty solid. I thought we got a pretty good sound. So my impressions of the plugin is that, you know, it's hard to tell. Like I'm kind of 50-50 on this plugin here. So I don't know if I would use this over top of, you know, maybe like another bass amp simulation plugin or something, something like an amplitude. You know, it, it, it's, it's hard to tell. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around. I've been playing with it for a couple weeks here, just uh, trying to see what I think about it. I think the tone that I got like in this particular song, I'm pretty happy with it, but I don't think it's a finalized sound. Um, and I don't think really any bass processing plugin would get me a finalized sound. I feel like, you know, I'm going to have to use some sort of compressor, some sort of equalization after it. Um, maybe even do like a parallel compression track where I'm adding some like saturation to that track. So getting more of a dirty bass track mixed in with it. Um, so yeah, it's hard to tell. So for me, I still have kind of mixed opinions on this plugin here. I don't know if I love the amp simulation in it, what I'm hearing. Um, I will say that I do like the amp peg one the best out of all of them. And I will say I do really like the cabinet and impulse response section because I do think when I was circling around that there, I thought I got a nice variety of different sounds. I thought that that really kind of, you know, mixed it up a bit there, depending, you know, well, not really depending on what was in the middle section. That kind of really changed up it, you know, kind of ignoring what was in the middle section there. So that really helped out a lot. So the plugin does give you a lot of different options for sound. So that's something that is very good about it. So... Overall, my suggestion for you guys is to, you know, try it out. I think they do have a free trial on it. Um, if you did like what you hear, you know, just go buy it. I do have a link in the description below. Um, just go for it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'll make this content for you and hit that notification bell to know new videos coming out. And if you enjoyed this content, definitely check out my review slash tutorial on the bass compressor double tap. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.